ELAB presentation. Looking the way in the world today takes everything you've got. Taking a break from all your worries sure would help a lot. Wouldn't you like to get away? Sometimes you want to go where everybody knows your name. Sky, help me. Oh, nothing can hold me when I hold you. It's all right, it can't be wrong. Rocking and rolling all night long. These days are rough. Share them with me. These days are rough. Happy and free. These happy days are yours and mine. These happy days are yours and mine. Happy days. <laughs> Started breathing on the night we kissed, and I can't remember what I ever did before. What would we do, baby, without us? What would we do, baby, without us? And there ain't no nothing we can't love each other.
Just a good old boy. Never meaning no harm. Beats all you never saw. Been in trouble with the law since the day they was born. Making their way. System like a two modern day Robin Hood. Yeehaw. 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 Look at what's happened to me. I can't believe it myself. Suddenly I'm up on top of the world. It should have been somebody else. My turn. Oh. She's a little bit. You're always taking my turn here. She's a little bit country. It's been a long time. <laughs> he is a little bit rock and roll. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Entertainment World's most shining stars are now gathering for a glittering night of Hollywood magic and memories. They're all here together to join you for the ultimate gala event, celebrating TV's most timeless shows. This truly is the television event of a lifetime, honoring the Legend Award, Cheers, the Pop Culture Award, Dallas, the Impact Award, Good Times, the Pioneer Award for Sid Caesar, presented by Billy Crystal. The future classic, Grey's Anatomy, the 40th anniversary of Batman. Plus the fan favorites you voted for. And a special performance by Miss Diana Ross. It's the 2006 TV Land Award. Starring Alison Arngrim, the cast of Cheers, Ted Danson, Kelsey Grammer, Jolly Long, Rhea Berman, and John Ratzenberger. The cast of Dallas, Mary Crosby, Patrick Duffy, Linda Gray, Mary Hagman, Susan Howard, Steve Canale, Ken Kirchhoff, Charlene Tilton, and Jerry Wilson. 
Robert Downey Jr., Jose Feliciano, the cast of Good Times, John Amos, Johnny Brown, Ralph Carter, Janae Dubois, Bernadette Stannis, Jimmy J.J. Walker, the, the cast of Grey's Anatomy, Justin Chambers, Patrick Dempsey, T.R. Knight, James Pickens Jr., Kate Walsh, and Chandra Wilson, Monty Hall, James Ingram, Kermit the Frog, Christopher Knight, Amy Linker, Peter Marshall, Wink Martindale, Johnny Mathis, Mary Tyler Moore, Don Most, Donny Osmond, Marie Osmond, Miss Piggy, Jeremy Piven, Gary Portnoy, Joey Scarberry, John Snyder, William Shatner, Danielle Spencer, Hilary Swank, Quentin Tarantino, Burt Ward, Adam West, Anson Williams, Denise Williams, Tom Wolpat, and Tina Yothers. And now, please welcome the gorgeous and gifted host of the 2006 TV Land Awards, the star of Will and Grace, and the upcoming Megan Mullally Show. Who else? Megan Mullally! Gosh, thank you. My goodness, I am looking out at this illustrious crowd, and I have to tell you, I'm a little overwhelmed because, come on, you have all given me and everybody watching out there in TV land so much. In fact, you've had such a huge impact on me that before we hand out the TV land awards, I'd like to hand out a few of my very own special thank yous. Uh, oh. The cast of Dallas, wow! <laughs> so many thank yous, I don't even know where to start. Linda Gray, thank you for being a pioneer in the field of actresses who play rich drunks. Thank you. <laughs> and of course, Charlene Tilton, thank you. Because before you came along, to be short on television, I thought you had to be a sassy black child. But, but no. <laughs> Living proof. Oh my gosh, the cast of Good Times. All right. <laughs> and of course, one of my thank yous must go to the great Norman Lear who gave us not only good times, but every show ever. <laughs> you know, uh, Norman, um, you probably don't remember this, but I actually auditioned for you a couple times back in the day. Just not your cup of tea, or? <laughs> maybe I was having an off day. I could do it better. Let me read it again. Oh, I, I don't have my sides. Well, maybe next time I'm with Gersh. They're listed. <sighs> oh, and I cannot believe it. The gang from Cheers. Wow. Thank you. Thank you all for making a show that the whole family could watch together. You know, without Cheers, just think how many children would have grown up not wanting to spend most of their waking hours in a bar? <laughs> Now let me take a personal minute to salute the man who directed Cheers and who has directed every single episode of Will and Grace and basically every great show in between, Mr. Jim Burroughs. Uh-oh, where is she? Shonda Rhimes. Shonda Rhimes. Yes. Fantastic created our new favorite show, Grey's Anatomy. <laughs> Thank you for your vision and your skill, Shonda, but mostly, thank you for Patrick Dempsey's cell phone number. I'll be using that later. I'll just uh, keep that line open. Thank you. All right. As a kid growing up in Oklahoma City, the great Carol Burnett show was on Monday nights at 9 o'clock Central Time. 
However, my bedtime was also 9 o'clock Central Time. So because it was my favorite show and my, my mom would put me to bed at 8 o'clock, I'd sleep for an hour, and then she'd wake me back up so that I could watch. <laughs> and I feel like the fact that I was exposed to great talent like Carol Burnett and so many of you who are here tonight has really helped make me who I am. So thank you. Thank you, Carol. And thank you, Mom. Whatever I've been lucky enough to achieve started right there in front of that television set in Oklahoma City with both of you. And now, to present our first award, we have some real television royalty. Two Dukes who bring out the Duchess in me. From the Dukes of Hazard, based, of course, on the Jessica Simpson vehicle of the same name. <laughs> Tom Wopat and John Schneider. Indeed, the TV Land Awards. You are this a year's bunch. Thank you. Oh. I was talking to the bunch. This year's Pop Culture Award honoree premiered on Sunday night, April 2nd, 1978. Wow. Introducing viewers to the most dysfunctional family ever portrayed in primetime. Ever. At the center of the bigger than life Texas oil zillionaire clan was an unscrupulous scoundrel in a 10 gallon hat. I'm speaking of none other than J.R. Ewing, played to perfection by Larry Hagman. That's right. My man from my dream of genie. That's right. And there is Linda Gray as JR's beautiful wife. Linda Gray. A gracious Southern belle who gracious. also happened to be an alcoholic and an adulteress. Good qualities in a woman on television in the 80s. Uh, Patrick Duffy played JR's little brother and chief rival for control of the Klan and the family empire. Bobby's brother-in-law, the evil schemer Cliff Barnes, was portrayed by Ken Kercheval. And the daughter of Gary, that was Lucy played by Charlene Tilton. Oh, I love Charlene. Hi, Charlene. <laughs> and please do not forget Jock Ewing's ranch foreman and illegitimate, yes, I said it, illegitimate son, Ray Krebs, played by Steve Canale. Oh. And Ray's politically savvy wife. That's right. Savvy. Donna Culver Krebs, acted by Susan Howard. Let's not forget April Stevens Ewing, played by Cherie Wilson. And finally, <laughs> who could forget Sue Ellen's sister, Kristen, the girl with the gun. The girl with the gun. Mary Crosby. That's right. Mary. They were the ultimate topics of water cooler conversations, the likes of which we may never see again. Never. So let's return now to South Fork. Please. Howdy, y'all. My name is Sally. I'm going to be your tour guide today here at South Fork Ranch, home to the famous television show, Dallas. Honey, y'all come on in. The show Dallas was the first nighttime soap opera. It was about a big oil family, very dysfunctional, I might add. Dude, jackass. There was a constant feud going on between the Ewings and the Barnes families, just like the Hatfields and the McCoys. Everyone was glued in every Friday night. In the 1985 season, Bobby got hit by a car. We all believed that Bobby had died. And then, Pam opened the shower door, and there Bobby was. Good morning. It was all a dream, and it was just a big old mess, but we kept watching the show. Y'all come on in. Don't lollygag around. Here we are at the Dallas Museum. We've got a lot of memorabilia from the show. Dallas was so popular, they even made J.R. beer. I don't think I'd drink it, though, honey. It's about 26 years old, and it might make you sick. Over here, we have the gun that shot JR on the show. It was late one night. He heard some sounds, and then all of a sudden, shots were fired. And JR fell to the ground, and we were all left wondering who had shot JR. Over 350 million people tuned in to see who had actually shot JR. Oh, honey, I'm not going to tell you who shot JR. It was spoil it for you. Oh, honey, I'll tell you, it was Kristen. Our tour today here at South Fork Ranch, and honey, y'all come back again real soon. It is with great pleasure that we present the TV Land Pop Culture Award to the cast of Dallas. 
accept the Pop Culture Award, please welcome Mary Crosby, Patrick Duffy, Linda Gray, Larry Hagman, Susan Howard, Steve Kanami, Ken Kirchival, Charlene Tilton, and Sheree Wilson. Oh, gosh. Say uh, something smart. <laughs> Money. Uh, I, we, we didn't get a lot of awards on our show, did we? I don't think we got any award. I think uh, Miss Ellie got some. Uh, but uh, this is really great. I appreciate it. And, and uh, all my cohorts and good buddies up here, we're we, uh, glad to be here and come on around the house afterwards. Okay. <laughs> I don't get many awards. I don't think I've won any awards. This is, this is it. The stars are out tonight. Coming up, Billy Crystal, Patrick Dempsey, William Shatner, and the Viewer's Choice Award for character most desperately in need of a time out. Plus a very special performance by Ms. Diana Ross. The 2006 TV Land Awards are presented by M&M's. Always fun. Stay tuned for more. What Ed Sullivan used to call a really big show tonight. So big, in fact, that not all of it will fit on this stage. So, for complete coverage of each and every TV Land Award and all of the stars studded behind the scenes happenings, you can go to TVLand.com whenever the spirit of TV Land moves you. And right now, moved to introduce you to our two lovely celebrity trophy people. First, a woman who fit in perfectly on square pegs, Amy Linker. And a rocking sister who was doing it for herself on Family Ties, Tina Yothers. Yes, Virginia, there were game shows before Deal or No Deal. And here's the proof. The ultimate power trio, Monty Hall, Wink Martindale, and Peter Marshall. You see, we're not all the same guy. We're three <laughs> different guys. So let's make a deal right now. Absolutely. Let me tell you how this next round works. Okie doke. Uh, we are here to present the Viewer's Choice Award that goes to someone whose outstanding bad or wise-ass behavior made us want to send them to stand in the corner over Can you there. say that? I, well, I said it. Well, how proud each of the nominees must feel about that. Their great acting made us believe their bad behavior. But before we see which X marks the spot, these are the nominees for character most in need of a time out. Take a look. Character most desperately in need of a time out. Nellie Olson, Little House on the Prairie. I want to play Uncle John. Bring around the rosy. You have it your way every single day, Nellie. Get back. Darlene Connor, Roseanne. You're about to become a strange smell in the attic. <laughs> Dee Thomas, what's happening? Oh, should I tell Roger to come downstairs and stop playing dice and say hello? <laughs> Is he upstairs playing dice again? Oh, my. Did I say that? <laughs> okay, Monty. Your line. Let's open up the TV Land TV dinner. I love this TV Land dinner. There you go. <laughs> Character desperately in need of a timeout. It's, it's a tie. It's a tie? No. It's a tie. Between Allison Angram oh. as Little House on the Prairie's Nellie Olson. Right. And Daniel Spencer, Danielle as D. Thomas from What's Happening. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, you hate me. You hate me. You really, really hate me. I could not be more proud just to have been on what was the greatest television show ever and have played the meanest, most horrible person anyone has had the pleasure to play. Well, I think I'm the brattiest. Hello. You're more annoying. Annoying? 
Excuse me, I have a hundred years on you. I was annoying in the 1800s. <laughs> what kind of show has a tie anyway? This is mine. I You're picked so on you. So annoying. Over. You know what? You're more annoying than ladies. More English. Ladies. Ladies. Listen, I beat up Christmas ladies. over Ladies. Break, right break it up. You two are on a timeout. Break it up. It's the king, that's who it is, not Norman. Up next, Billy Crystal presents the Pioneer Award to Sid Caesar. Then later, Mary Tyler Moore, Robert Downey Jr., William Shatner, Donnie and Marie, and tributes to the casts of Good Times and Cheers when the 2006 TV Land Awards returns. never had to fake it with our next presenter. He's a brilliant talent on any screen and now on any stage. The one, the only, Billy Crystal. Thank you. I'm here tonight because of Sid Caesar. I mean, just here to present him with this award, but I'm here as a comedian because of this pioneering comedy genius. Now, the first time I saw Sid, I was a little kid back in Long Beach, Long Island. Your show of shows was on, it's the early 50s. The King and I was the hot movie. Yul Brynner was its hot star. So, of course, it did a takeoff on King and I on show of shows. So, there was a palace set. Sid made his entrance, no shirt, capri pants, bad bald wig, funny bald wig, bare feet. He hit Yul's pose just like this. And then he suddenly grabs his bare foot and he starts screaming, who's smoking in the palace? There's no smoking in the palace. It was hilarious. I was hooked. And even though I was five years old, I wanted to do what Sid did. I just wanted to be like him and his cast of characters, Carl Reiner, Howard Morris, Imogene Coker. I wanted to be funny. wanted to be funny like Sid was funny. He could do anything. He could be anybody, from the German professor to Progress Hornsby. Now, Progress Hornsby was really the first stoned character on television. He was a jazz musician who was always high, and he would introduce his group and say, we have somebody on radar to warn them in case they approach the melody. <laughs> he could talk in any language and see him play any kind of character. It was a great time for funny people on television, and his energy, his commitment to being dangerous on live television, and yet so real at the same time was breathtaking. He was like all my crazy relatives, except Sid would buy retail. <laughs> now, so many years later, so over 50 years later, the brilliance of Sid and his genius sidekicks and the writing of Mel Brooks, Neil Simon, Larry Gelbart, Woody Allen on one staff is still as funny today as it was back then. He's timeless. He is my hero. And I can't tell you how much it means to me to be here tonight as that little kid watching Sid Caesar growing up on that black and white television set that I have the honor of not only knowing him, but tonight to publicly thank him and my parents for letting me stay up late to watch him. I'm not sure what kind of comedy I would have done if I had not seen Sid Caesar. I don't know if I'd be a comic at all. And funny is a precious metal, and Sid has always been and will always remain the gold standard. Remember me? Oh. oh. <laughs> yes. I wonder if you tell our audience exactly who this lady is. I don't know who she is, but it's all right with me. She's for next week's program. What do you mean next week? Sid Caesar, I think, was the greatest single sketch comedian in the history of television. Sid Caesar was to early television what Chaplin was, what Buster Keaton was. He was a pioneer. Isn't the ocean beautiful tonight? Kind of rough tonight, eh? You're going to want some wet to go, some. You're going to want to some. That's some gong, eh? Sid has to still be considered in the top five comics ever. He infused that box of television 
with a kind of a spirit, and the light still reaches us. Merci, mesdames et messieurs. Et ce qui vous donne entendre de débarrasser de votre pays et d'en sortir si bien qu'on doit dire les sardes, c'est pas qu'il dit là, Billy Crystal. Billy Crystal, qu'on s'entend dans la grande comédienne. Sur la chair, il ne vend dans les mêmes dans la cour. Tu ne sautes pas, Billy Paul. Et soyez de l'ensemble de l'image. Tout toi, il dit cela, maman. Et que Bélan s'en dit de pas de Bélan dans le Voltaire. Voltaire, où tout ça, on vit d'attendre près de pas de là. Émile Zola, j'ai de la prendre, il va t'en. Il va rentrer de soirée, il va t'en l'emport. Il va tout le chanant, Madame Curie. Et ce qu'il va l'entendre, il chante, il ne va pas l'air. Good night, my hair, my hair. Sie fallen sie an der Reich von der Neustadt der Schöne und das ganze Verlauben in Willacht auf allen Schichten. Max Planck wird der Umbruch als Schilder auf Wucht von einer Albert Einstein Wucht auf der Schöne. Oh, oh, oh. In der Fall noch ein Mädchen von der Schöne. Es gefallen sie auch für den Beethoven. Es gefallen sie nicht. Es gefallen sie Mozart und die Bilder und Wagner und der Bilder Augen und die Schleier. Und Wagner wird fliehen, also Wüste da rein. In Polen, in Tschechoslowakia, aus der Fall anderer, in Achtung war auch nicht mehr. Das gefällt uns auch nicht. Buona sera, Signore, Signorina. Und dann auch Michelangelo Bonarotti. Michelangelo, Gebanato der Sistine Chapel, kommt auf Peter oder da. Und dann der Pope Julius II, bei Lord Ivanama, Kose da Pate. Sind doch schon die, die wir lernen aber dort. Hey, Bo. Hey, Michael. Mike, come on down. We're going to wallpaper. Yeah, we'll talk about it, and then just sit down. Merci, mesdames and messieurs. Thank you very, very, very much. Holy Award Show! Stay tuned as we celebrate the 40th anniversary of Batman. Plus, Happy Days, Anson Williams and Don Most. The 2006 TV Land Awards are presented by M&M's. Always fun. Stay tuned for more. Happy Days, Don Most and Anson Williams. Our next viewer's choice is what you might call a family affair. That's right, brothers and sisters, we're here to talk about those siblings, real or imagined, who showed us that the family that sings together stays together. Our nominees include two real-life siblings who sang with one another, despite the fact that she was a little bit country and he was a little bit rock and roll. <laughs> then there are three sisters who are more than a little bit country. And finally, we have a TV family band that was rock and roll as you could be with your mom in the tour bus. Here are your nominees for Favorite Singing Siblings. Favorite Singing Siblings. The Partridge Family. The Partridge Family. Barbara. 
Barbara Louise and Earlene Mandrell. Barbara Mandrell and the Mandrell Sisters. Donnie and Marie Osmond. Donnie and Marie. We were leaving it all up to you, and your viewer's choice award for favorite singing siblings goes to. Got the TV dinner right here. Yeah, smells good. A duo who we all love, and it's not just puppy love anymore. Donnie, Donnie and Marie. I mean, how many years have we been? Three hundred. Never mind. Yeah. But the, <laughs> you know, I have eight children now. He has five children. We're just y yes. And I'm a grandpa. We have to do this quick because Donnie needs to get his rest. You know, he's kind of old. So. Yes, thank you. <laughs> No, but we were just saying backstage that, you know, it's so fun to be here to see so many people that we worked with and, and thoroughly enjoyed it. It was an uh, innocent era of television. And, uh, you know, it's interesting because they were saying back there that more people watched Donnie and Marie because there were only three networks it, on a Friday night than the entire running of the blockbuster Jaws, right, which was that. the movie at that time worldwide. And it just proved to me that people like big, scary teeth. <laughs> <laughs> Speak for yourself, sister. But actually, it is an honor to be associated with uh, this great medium of television and to see so many friends out there and to be a part of this whole thing. So on behalf of my sister Latoya and myself, thank you very much <laughs> for this award. Thank you all, all very much. Fans, thank you so much. man's work for most of my life and every time I get anywhere near him I rush over and breathlessly introduce myself and every time it's just like the first time <laughs> let's see if I can make a bigger impression on him right now this Emmy winner is starring in his very own living in TV land episode premiering right after our show tonight beam me up because this is William Shatner <laughs> What's your name again? No, no, it's okay, it's okay. Yes, it's true. It's true. I'm on later tonight, just after the show, and may I say, with all due humility, I'm wonderful. <laughs> but that's for other people to say. Enough about me until later. No classic superhero was ever brought to life on TV with more sly wit and animated energy than Batman, which, believe it or not, turns 40 this year, 40 years, man. That has flown by at warp speed for three seasons. With Adam West as the wonderfully straight-laced and tongue-in-cheek, I hope he kept his tongue in his cheek, Kate Crusader and Burt Ward as his trusty boy wonder, Batman used everything in the TV arsenal, the Batmobile, the bat phone, the that signal, even Bruce Lee, and he fought off TV's most eccentric and curiously lovable criminal minds, including the Riddler, the Catwoman, the Penguin, and the dreaded Mr. Freeze. You'd have to be a real joker not to love Batman. For the past four decades, a diabolical crime wave has swept through Gotham City. But who can stop it? There's only one man who can handle this. I don't have to tell you who. Batman. 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 Him again. 
Yes, Batman, the Cape Crusader, the greatest, most dedicated superhero of our time. The more you work with Batman, the more amazing he seems. Joining Batman in his crime-fighting crusade is his sidekick, Robin. Holy weaponry! Holy haberdashery! Holy oleo! No matter what the perilous situations they face, Batman and Robin always triumph over evil. And when it comes to stopping crime, Batman is the most cunning. I was able to infuse this one room with anti-blast bat powder. Oh, very clever. The most commanding. To the bat poles. To the bat cave. To the batmobile. And the smoothest with the ladies. You hateful hussy. You're attractive, Catwoman, but not that attractive. Where does one usually find a bust? So happy 40th anniversary, Batman. Let the celebrations begin. Oh, how delicious. And what will the next 40 years bring for our brave heroes? Morals are the stuff men are made of. And until criminals learn that, our job will not be done. Stay tuned. Same bat time, same bat channel. Total syndication. Citizens of Gotham and the galaxy, please welcome the crime-fighting stars of the classic Batman, Adam West and Burt Ward. All right, you have your Trekkies, we have our baddies, you know this. <laughs> Bert, why don't we just stand here for a moment and let them admire our incredible crime-fighting physiques. <laughs> That's it. A couple of guys in tights just running around fighting crime wherever they find it. Forty years, Bert. <sighs> Holy Jurassic Park! Anyway, we're, we're pleased to be part of TV land, to be living in TV land, and to be part of this celebration tonight with all of this wonderful, graceful talent. And I'd like to thank Larry Jones and all the folks there, and my lovely wife, Marcel, and Nina, and some of my other folks, and Bert, I'm sure you have something i just want to say uh, thank you tv land and i want to say hi to my beautiful wife tracy at home and my daughter melody and my other daughter lisa thank you all we love you thank you folks <laughs> Oh. Now that's very original. <laughs> you guys have never heard that before. So, never heard that one before. Don't go anywhere. You won't want to miss a never-before-seen episode of Grey's Anatomy. Plus, Mary Tyler Moore, Quentin Tarantino, and reunions with the casts of Good Times and Cheers. All that and more when the 2006 TV Land Awards continues. Tonight, we are honoring the brilliant drama series, Grey's Anatomy. <laughs> As the TV land future classic. And that's only right because the show is compelling, entertaining, and original. Well, maybe not entirely original. In truth, some of us in this room have been around long enough to remember another medical show that made the rounds a few years ago, and that in retrospect, now seems awfully familiar. You make the diagnosis. In a hospital, they say you know when your number is up. Some think there's some kind of sixth sense. Whatever it is, it's creepy. If you knew this was your last day on Earth, how would you spend it? I wonder if I could borrow Klinger's good earrings. Listen up, interns. This is a tough job. You will work every night until you drop, but you don't complain. I am Dr. Julia Baker, and I don't discriminate. To me, you are just medical waste. Medical waste! Get to work! Julia, I thought you were a nurse. Oh, dear. That was 1968. Things have changed since then. 
Besides, you don't even work here. I thought Dr. Gillespie was tough. <laughs> oh, my nose. Looks like a fractured septum and massive swelling of the nasal membranes. <sighs> now that dreamy Doug Simpson will never go out with me. You know, I've seen a lot of routine broken noses in my time at medical center, but to me, this looks like a football injury. Then again, I always did have a thing for a man in a smock. Huh? I need some help here, stat! Sorry, my mind was elsewhere. I have an adult male with a gunshot wound to the abdomen. Ooh, that's unpleasant. Who shot you? Now, boys, you know I can't tell you that. Come on, tell us. It was Sue Ellen, wasn't it? Oh, no, it was Miss Ellie, I tell you. Sue Ellen. Miss Ellie. Sue Ellen. Miss Ellie. Sue Ellen. It was Kristen. Okay, Kristen. Now, will you transfer me to a hospital in Dallas? Ooh, 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 this won't be a good first impression. Oh, great. <sighs> Technology. We never had this problem in 1867. Help! Help! This thing is stuck! <sighs> Sully's never gonna believe this. Springs. Paging Dr. Quinn. Look who's coming. Doc McDreamy. Hi, ladies. Margaret, would you care to join me for a drink on the Lido deck? I know a good bartender. We're expecting you. Is she gonna rock his boat? Code black. Emergency. Code black. <gasps> that is so politically incorrect. Hurry up. His blood pressure is dropping. We don't operate now. We're gonna lose him. Emergency. Code black. Dr. Gammon, what is his status? Appetitus massivo boom boomus. Patient swallowed massive amounts of explosives. That could blow the hospital sky high. What can we do? There's only one thing we can do. What's that, Doc? Someone's got to put their hand in his stomach until the bomb squad arrives. Makes total sense. How did I get so unlucky? I'm about to get blown to bits, and I'm in love with a guy who's already married. It's just not fair. But when you stop to think about it, what in life is fair? Oh, I remember when I was back in Korea. Hey, hey, can't we think a little quiet off in here? I got explosives inside me. And turn down that music. Can't we get some Commodores up in here? I'm sorry, it's just that, well, some of us have lives that are important and dramatic. What kind of explosives did you swallow? Dynamite! An explosive gray anatomy is next on TV Land. Followed by CSI Mayberry. Tonight's TV Land Impact Award rightly goes to a groundbreaking series that between 1974 and 1979 promised and delivered 120 episodes of Good Times. Good Times. <laughs> Took us inside the inner city home of Florida Evans, who we first met as Maud's wise and sometimes weary housekeeper. <laughs> to present Good Times with the Impact Award, who else? Mr. Quentin Tarantino. Where's the good time? Well, there you guys are. 
<laughs> Tonight TV Land's Big Impact Award goes to a show that really was dynamite! <laughs> For a funny show, good times kept it real. The Adams, Evans family faced evictions, they faced gangs, and even the ratings challenge a happy day in the Fonz. But y'all, this wasn't your father knows best kind of sitcom. This was something new, controversial, and still unforgettable. This was Good Times! Hello, lucky person. You got the number right, because you are talking to kid a dynamite! <laughs> Good Times was a very good show, and it was a noble attempt to say something on television that hadn't been said. The show is just about hard times, you know, a family growing up in the projects. It was a struggle, but it was a struggle with each other. You know, I thought if I'd have got that job, that we'd gonna be okay. Instead, we broke. What was we yesterday? Broke. <laughs> and probably we'll be again tomorrow. But James, you always see this family through. Good Times promised a sense of authenticity. It was anything but good times. Please, I won't be a bad girl anymore. Please, I promise. I want you to tell me the truth, okay? Who buried you? I mean, who beat you up? Who did those terrible things to you? I would call that show a dramedy because it was real issues, dramatic issues. Your father's gun is missing, Michael. But, you know, it still had a sense of humor. It made light of a lot of things. Here it is. Yeah, that's it, all right. Looks just like me, slim, black, and dynamite! Good Times was a very good show. They veer into drama, serious drama. We regret to inform you that your husband, James Evans, was... killed in an automobile. Oh, my God! Every black household in America was crying that night. That James died. Damn, damn, damn! <laughs> Good Times was the kind of show <laughs> that made an impact, I think, because just the sheer novelty of seeing a black family on TV was still news at that time. The Evans family were a very integral part of growing up in black households, very integral. It has affected our lives to this day because it allowed us to see ourselves. Good times roll one more time. Ladies and gentlemen, ain't we lucky we got them? The winners of the TV Land Impact Awards. Good time! To accept the Impact Award, please welcome John Amos, Johnny Brown, Ralph Carter, Janae Dubois, Bernadette Stannis, and Jimmy J.J. Walker. Surprises me for it, Julie, John, but whatever. I, we all thank the cast and everything, but especially Norman Lear, who put the whole thing. And after, Shut up, JJ. <laughs> and after 35 years, still has five shows, still running heavy in syndication. We got to give it to Norman Lear, the best, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Norman Lear. Thank you. Thank you, Norman. Larry Jones, um, Esther Rowe, thank you, my whole cast my mom, my family, and God for making me part of television history. <laughs> to the sacred memory of our ancestor, Esther Rowe, we thank you, Esther, for opening the door for us. I want to say, as Sid Caesar would say, Norman Lear, thank you. Thank you, God. Thank you especially to Norman for allowing us to be part of your changing the face of television. Yes. Thank you, Norman. Thank you for all the actors and all the audiences that watched us over the years. God bless you all. Thank you. Thank you, Norman. It was such an honor. It was like, this is like the royal family. Oh, yeah. all right. Find out why Miss Piggy has a meltdown.
plus Dr. McGreeny and the real cast of Grey's Anatomy when the 2006 TV Land Awards return. For a complete list of winners and exclusive interviews, log on to tvland.com. Please welcome two of our most distinguished Muppets, Kermit and Miss Piggy. Ah, thank you, thank you very much. Good to see everyone. Oh, oh. yes. Hi. Oh, Kermit and I are so excited to be here at the TV Land Awards. Isn't that right, Kermit? We are, we are. Yes, yes, yes we are. Yes, because we are presenting an award about something we truly care about. True. Food! Oh, uh, that's right, that's right. You know, TV and food, have sort of always gone together. And we're not just talking about TV dinners here, are we? Oh, no. no, no, but you know, TV breakfast, TV lunches, and perhaps most importantly of all, TV, TV snacks. snacks. That's right. Oh yeah, oh yeah. So if you are snacking right now, no? and we can see that you are, <laughs> stop stuffing your face for a second, and consider some of the classic food items that have been an essential and delicious part of our viewing and tasting lives over the years. That's right. So here then are your tasty, dietetically balanced nominees for the Viewer's Choice Award for Favorite TV Food. Favorite TV Food. Pork chops and applesauce. The Brady Bunch. Watch for dinner. Pork chops. Pork chops. Huh? <laughs> what else? Applesauce? Pork chops. Now for shosh. Mm, that's swell. Loose meat sandwich, rosé. Fruity yet bovine. <laughs> An impudent little sandwich, bingo. Long as the brownstone bread, I love Lucy. How does that oven door get open? Ah! <laughs> Pork chops? Uh, I, that was a tad insensitive. I apologize yeah, yeah, for that. Say, I but you know what, Kermit? No. I'm not offended. Okay, no, good. No, and you know why? Why? Because I am a professional. Okay, all right. Well, that's good. That's good. So, the winner of the Viewer's Choice Award for Favorite TV Food is... Professional. Uh, you might want to cover your ears. The award goes to the Brady Bunch for cooking up some uh, uh, pork chops and applesauce. What? Yes. Accepting for the Brady Bunch, Christopher Knight. Thank you. Hi right there, Chris. I think. Pork chops, huh? Yeah. Well, I uh, mm -hmm. feel a little awkward. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. do feel awkward. Take this pork chop, TV land. Hi, yeah! Uh oh. I hit me. I didn't know how that feels. I, you hit me. Oh. Uh, you know, I'm, uh, I'm going to lose my appetite for this, so. On behalf of all the Bradys and pork, <laughs> thank you. Oh, he shouldn't have said that. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the Emmy-nominated star of Entourage, Jeremy Piven. Hi. Uh, created by the gifted writer Shonda Rhimes. Grey's Anatomy centers on the intertwined lives of five surgical interns trying to stay alive at a Seattle hospital. Although they make 11 times what any real doctor makes, and they're better looking than any doctor I've ever come across in my life, we celebrate them. I deviate from this fine script, I'm sorry. Among Dr. Meredith Grey's colleagues are the wonderfully sensitive Dr. George O'Malley. Yes played by T.R. Knight. And then there's the more seductively sensitive, but apparently hunky, Dr. Alex Karev, played by Justin Chambers. Our interns have outstanding role models in Dr. Miranda Bailey, who, as played by Chandra Wilson, is perhaps the most lovable TV Nazi since Colonel Clink. <laughs> the boss, Dr. Richard Weber, brought to life by James Pickens, Jr.
And finally, Patrick Dempsey. Yes, indeed. Yes. <laughs> you can feel the love, can't you, Patrick? As Dr. McDreamy, and I'm reading, Patrick. And uh, Dr. Uh, McDreamy's wife, played by the lovely and incredibly talented Kate Walsh. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, these are your good doctors of Seattle Grace. It's a look patients get in their eyes. When the great beyond is headed for you, you feel it coming. What's the one thing you've always dreamed of doing before you die? Meet Meredith Gray, one of the five new interns at Seattle Grace Hospital. Together, these talented young doctors are on the journey of a lifetime. Hi, I'm Isabel Stevens, but everyone calls me Izzy. Don't bother sucking up. I already hate you. That's not gonna change. Grey's Anatomy is a bold new type of medical show that combines heart-stopping drama with action, office politics, and the battle of the sexes. You took advantage of me, and now you want to forget about I it. I did not. I take... was drunk, vulnerable, and good-looking, and you took advantage. Okay, I was the one who was drunk, and you are not that good-looking. Although the show has been hailed for its clever and sometimes wicked sense of humor, Grey's Anatomy never forgets what it means to be mortal. You never promise a patient's family a good outcome. I, I thought you get to be the one to tell her that she's a widow. It's another long day at Seattle Grace Hospital, where work is always a matter of life, of death, and of love. Your choice, it's simple. Her or me. And I'm sure she's really great. But Derek, I love you. So pick me. Choose me. Love me. And now I have the pleasure of presenting the TV Land Future Classic Award to the show's creator, Shonda Rhimes, and the good doctors who are not currently on call from Grey's Anatomy. To accept the Future Classic Award, please welcome Betsy Beers, Justin Chambers, Rob Corn, Patrick Dempsey, Mark Gordon, Peter Horton, T.R. Knight, James Pickens Jr., Shonda Rhimes, Kate Walsh, and Chandra Wilson. So, Batman, Good Times, Dallas, Sid Caesar, Grey's Anatomy. As they, as they say on Sesame Street, one of these things is not like the others, one of these things just doesn't belong. We accept this unbelievably humbly in the, in the hopes that one day we actually could be thought of in the company of the people sitting in this room. It has been amazing for us to even be here and to feel this. If anybody's going to consider us a classic, I think it's because of these actors standing behind me who have done so much. These producers standing behind me, these directors standing behind me. And, you know, we'll do our best to bring you enough drama, enough romance, enough sex, enough sniffleless, enough McDreamy to warrant this award. Thank you very much. Up next, find out which of these Oscar winners will take home the award for Little Screen, Big Screen Star. Plus a very special performance by Miss Diana Ross. More stars, more fun, more TV Land Awards to come. Presented by M&M's. Always fun. Ladies and gentlemen, 
Please welcome a brilliant actor who was Oscar nominated for his performance as Charlie Chaplin. And hey, what do you know? We've both been called the little tramp. The great Robert Downey Jr. Hi. All of your nominees in the Viewer's Choice Award for Little Screen Big Screen Star category prove beautifully that sometimes size really doesn't matter. They all first appeared before our eyes on television, but eventually they all found their way into the wonderful world of movies as well. TV Land honors these splendid actors and actresses who bring their big talent to any screen, fortunate enough to have them. These are your nominees. Little Screen, Big Screen Star, Jamie Foxx. Mm. You even smell good. What do you got on poison? Oh uh, no, that's Desinex. <laughs> Hillary Swank. Kirk Baker, king of the rad buns, is working the night shift at Bomber's Pizza. Come on, Ernie, we're going out for pizza. <laughs> you don't seriously expect me to appear in public with little Poindexter? I can't go if we don't take him. Okay. But he has to walk five feet behind us. George Clooney. I have to find a blonde goddess. Only one person would qualify. Bikini Magazine's Miss January. Who wears a bikini in January? Right. She got bronchitis and canceled. <laughs> and the little screen, big screen star is a brilliant actress who's gone from Beverly Hills 90210 to an even better neighborhood where Oscars tend to pile up on the mantle. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this year's little screen, big screen star, Hillary Swank. Thank you, thank you very much, and thank you, Robert. It's so sweet of you to be here tonight to present me with this lovely award. Um, I have to admit, when I was on the set of Harry and the Hendersons, I never thought I'd be on stage accepting an award of any kind. <laughs> to be able to do so tonight in front of the legends like Mary Tyler Moore and Norman Lear is a great thrill. Thanks to the fans who voted and to TV Land for creating a home for classic television so future generations can be entertained and inspired, just like I was, by all of you who I am so honored to be standing in front of tonight. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, to present the TV Land Legend Award tonight, a television legend in her own right, and an actress that I love so much that ever since the 70s, I have insisted on being referred to as Megan Tyler Mullally. Ladies and gentlemen, the great Mary Tyler Moore. everybody. I am here tonight to salute a legendary comedy, most honored and funniest ensemble of all shows in television history. Now I'm speaking about a beloved series created by Glenn Charles, Les Charles, and James Burroughs, set in a bar in Boston, Massachusetts. This was not just any watering hole either, but a welcoming place where an eclectic group of individuals 
found a second home, a special place, as the song goes, where everybody knows your name. The show wasn't an immediate hit, but it went on to become the very epitome of what must-see TV must be. Thanks to great writing, direction, and one of the most brilliant casts ever assembled. And I've known a few good ones. Over the course of 273 episodes, Cheers became a phenomenon, earning 26 Emmy Awards. More importantly, it earned a permanent place in our hearts. Hey, what's happening, Norm? Well, it's a dog-eat-dog -dog world, Sammy, and I'm wearing milk bone underwear. <laughs> Cheers is every neighborhood bar, and I think everybody in every neighborhood bar across the United States probably watched Cheers. It was a fantastic show. You know, I always wanted to pop you one. <laughs> Maybe this is my lucky day, huh? You disgust me. I hate you. Are you as turned on as I am? More. <laughs> Cheers did a great job because it's a show that everybody can identify with. Oh, death in life, the days that are no more. Who said that? You did. A lot of its energy comes from the snappy dialogue. I'm ashamed God made me a man. I don't think God's doing a lot of bragging about it either. It was a sincere program. It had a, a lot of meaning to it. It had a lot of reality to it. I'm going to kiss you. I'm going to kiss you hard, and I'm going to kiss you long. But make no mistake about it, I am going to kiss you. In fact, I'm going to kiss you like you never... Cheers reached out to everybody and said something to everybody. You want to go where people know People are all the same You want to go where everybody knows your name Cheers is just an all-around great show for us everyday people. my great honor to present the cast of Cheers with one of TV Land's greatest honors, the Legend Award. Together again, the cast and creators of Cheers. To accept the Legend Award, please welcome James Burroughs, Glenn Charles, Les Charles, Ted Danson, Kelsey Grammer, Shelley Long, Rhea Perlman, and John Ratzenberger. Mary, Mary, thank you so much. Mary. You are royalty. Thank you so much. You honor us by coming out here to give us this award. Thank you so much. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, Georgie and Woody and uh, Kirsty are not here, but they send their love. They're off working someplace, being fabulous. Um, no, 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 no. You want me to go? Shout out. Shout out. It always comes down to me. I like it when the writers here, the Charles Brothers, write something for me to say. Thank you just doesn't do it. But um, this one lady who I don't think has ever been acknowledged, she, is the, she was the wife of one of our producers, Marianne Charles. Thank you, Marianne. Uh, I just will be eternally grateful for having the fun of serving up beers to these goofballs and all the other goofballs who aren't here for the or 11 years. It was just like such a cool thing. And thanks a lot. Thank you. Now, unlike most casts who after their shows uh, go off uh, prime time, and they really don't see each other anymore, but. We've been so close over the past, what, 11, 12 years, we meet every Thursday afternoon at Teddy's house and play Twister. <laughs> and uh, thank you all for this honor, and thank you to the men and women overseas who put their lives out on the line for us every day so we can do this. God bless. Oh, all right, okay.
thing. Um, I, um, I had the best time I ever had uh, on my first TV job. Jimmy Burroughs never uh, fails to remind me that they wanted John Lithgow instead. Thank you. I, I would just like to really uh, quickly thank the TV land, not just for this award, but for everything they're doing to keep television heritage alive. Very important. And I don't think there's a better example of that than, than uh, the salute tonight for uh, Sid Caesar, which was uh, so great to share. Thank you. I, I would like to thank the cast of Cheers. They never presented us with any kinds of kind of problems, any kind of head problems. They presented us with uh, script problems, and uh, they let us work it out and make it, make it well. And I congratulate them and thank them for that tonight. That was a long, long, and very uh, happy relationship with Kev. Thank you. Uh, I think from the, this thank you is from the bottom of all of our hearts to, uh, to people who were instrumental in this show, uh, Grant Tinker and the late Brandon Tartikoff. We will not see the lights in the executive ranks again of those two. Plus, the man who wrote us our first fan letter is in the audience, Norman Lear. And to the woman who started both, all three of us, Glenn Les and I, uh, at Mary Tyler Moore, we all began at that studio and we owe her an incredible debt of gratitude. You know, it was so funny to see that clip. That was a long time ago. Don't go away. A very special performance by superstar Miss Diana Ross is next as the 2006 TV Land Awards continues. As the host of this show, I have demanded and have now received the honor of presenting the last award of the evening, and what an honor it is. The marriage of music and television is definitely one of the longest and most successful in all of show business history. Tonight's nominees for TV's Greatest Music Moment show us why this marriage works. They feature Diana Ross's famous performance in Central Park, which had to be the most heartwarming rainy night of music ever, Live Aid, a global gathering to help feed the world, the unlikely Grammy summit of Eminem and Elton John, the late night reunion of the beloved Sonny and Cher on the David Letterman show that proved that the beat really does go on, and a future president of the United States, Bill Clinton, on the Arsenio Hall show, letting the world know that he actually was a sax maniac. <laughs> and here is your choice for TV's greatest music moment. But we had yesterday. Hey, hey, hey.
thank you for all that you've done for me, giving back. Do you know where you're going to? Do you like the things that life is showing you? Where are you going to? Do you know once we were standing still in time? Chasing the fantasies that filled our mind. You knew I loved you, but my spirit was free. Laughing at the questions that you once asked of me. Do you know where you're going to? Do you like the things that life is showing you? Where are you going to? Do you else well you can't follow and act like that so uh, I just want to say that this has been a McDreamy night for me <laughs> and I hope for all of you so thank you to everybody here and everybody out there in TV land and now I just have two last people to thank mom Carol I'm so glad we had this time together thank you good night You talking to me?
So you're used to listening to singers who sing with a melody. You talking to me? The most the world is. recognizes you as Captain Kirk. Denny Crane! You calling me? This is the time of his life. Has been. William Shatner is living in TV land. Part of a new original series featuring a new star every week. Coming up next, immediately following the TV Land Awards.